bitter flowing through our veins AI our compass showing the way what once was science fiction now our reality we're shaping the future every day optimism creativity conscience leading the way data and AI unlocking a brighter day building a world that's better for all with every step we take we will never fall imagination innovation and a sense of wonder the keys to unlock what's to come with great power comes great responsibility to make sure that our world is not undone optimism creativity conscience leading the way data and ai unlocking a brighter day building a world that's better for all with every step we take we will never fall The song you just heard was written by artificial intelligence. <laughs> Actually, let me rephrase. I ask AI to specifically write a song to open this talk. This particular AI was built on a model that was trained with 570 gigabytes of text data from all kinds of digital sources. 570 gigabytes. That's like 1.3 million books. So that's a very well-educated AI that mimicked human intelligence very well. But it still took me around 40 iterations to get to the version you just heard. And to be honest, I still don't think it's perfect. Data flowing through our veins sounds a little bit too anatomical for my taste. <laughs> anyway, while I was interacting with this AI bot through a small chat window to create the song, I thought about HAL 9000 from 2001 Space Odyssey. I thought about Jarvis from Iron Man. And I thought about Wally -E from the movie Wally. -E. AI has been part of pop culture for decades now. But it wasn't until recently, especially after the rise of generative AI, which are AI algorithms that can create content, that now it's an undeniable part of our reality. And the public has, let's say, mixed reactions. Historically speaking, innovation have often faced controversy. When the automobile was first introduced, people thought it was an unnecessary luxury, while others saw it as a groundbreaking new way of transportation. When television was first introduced, people thought it would rot people's minds, while others saw it as a new way of entertainment and information dissemination. When social media were first introduced, people thought it would lead to the decay of human interactions in the real world, where others saw it as a new way of connecting and engaging with people all over the world. As for AI, people do see the opportunities of solving complex problems and improving human life, while others see the dangers of the displacement of jobs or the loss of control over machines. The point is this. Human beings have to shape and guide AI into the future. And without guiding it, things can go really badly. So we need to take actions to actually shape and guide it. But before we know what actions to take, we need to understand first how AI works. In a nutshell, the main purpose of AI is to mimic human intelligence, and that does that by being trained with data that represent human thinking and human behavior. In the data, patterns are identified and then recontextualized in a new environment. Hence also the name machine learning. The more data there is, and the higher the granularity of the data, the better machines can mimic human intelligence. But here's the fundamental problem. Human beings are, unfortunately, not perfect. I'm sure you've all made mistakes in your life. If you haven't, 
I can only recommend it, give it a try. <laughs> I, I made already a few this morning just by burning my arm at the oven, but that's unimportant for the story. <laughs> Imagine all of humanity's mistakes recorded, documented, and then fed to machines to learn from them. That doesn't sound great, right? The point is this. AI can only be as good as we human beings shape and guide it to be. And I mean good in both the technological sense as well as the human and ethical sense. So what can we actually do? I'm sure not all of you are data and AI experts here today, and you may not ever want to be, but there are three things that all of us can do. Good news. These three things are so powerful They've existed since the beginning of humankind, and they were the drivers behind most of the world's innovations. And they are so human as well that I don't think AI will ever be able to replace them. I'm talking about creativity, optimism, and conscience. I asked my son once what he wanted to eat for dinner. He thought about it for a second, and then enthusiastically screamed, Christmas tree! It was a warm day in April, by the way. I asked him why he wanted to eat Christmas tree, and he just said that he was curious. You see, the human mind is irrational, unpredictable, and also curious. And that's how we come up with new ideas and create new things. As Pablo Picasso himself once said, the chief enemy of creativity is common sense. But creativity comes in different shapes as well. There's incremental creativity, and there's disruptive creativity. Incremental creativity means if you create something new, heavily relying on something existing. Think about the summary of a book or telling a joke based on a real-life situation, like I just did. Disruptive creativity means if you create something with an element of absolute newness in it. Think about literally inventing the wheel or inventing a whole new style of art, like Picasso once did with Cubism. I'm not going to lie. I think AI is probably already faster and more efficient when it comes to incremental creativity, although the results are debatable, as you heard in the song before. But when it comes to disruptive creativity, it's going to be much harder for AI to actually do that. How could we ask machines, whose main purpose is to identify patterns and to operate within them, to break out of these patterns again and create something completely out of them? We need disruptive creativity not only to distinguish ourselves from the machines, but also to give an element of freshness and humanity to AI moving forward. Today's education is focused a lot on memorizing things and passing tests, but we need to keep encouraging original and unconventional thinking. And that means by starting to empower uniqueness. If AI is going to homogenize things and that content is fed to AI again, wouldn't everything become bland and kind of the same? We need to be the differentiators. We need to also empower human interactions, because this is where the human nuances create contextual information in our brains first, before they become digital data that can be fed to AI again. And we need to encourage divergent thinking, because for every problem there's a lot of solutions, and while there's a more convergent approach to find the best solution with an AI, we human beings have the talent to think in scenarios and possibilities and to shape and guide it better, to guide it into the future. How many optimists does it take to change a light bulb? Any guesses? None, because optimists always see light in the darkness. <laughs> oh, that joke worked better than I thought. Uh, I, I know that joke is not great, actually. But I'm a father of two, so I'm a uh, allowed to enjoy a dad joke once in a while. <laughs> Optimism is the tendency to expect good things in the future. And when you're faced with the future, you can either do it passively, by just sitting back and waiting for the good thing to come, or you do it actively by taking actions and thereby increasing the likelihood of the good outcome to appear. This type of active attitude is part of a bigger concept called psychological capital, in which besides optimism, there are three more elements. There's hope, which means persevering towards goals. There's resilience, which means bouncing back from setbacks. And there's self-efficacy, which is believing in yourself that you can overcome difficult situations. So for AI, that means we need to be optimistic by taking actions, we need to persevere towards the goal of a better future. We need to bounce back when we have setbacks on the way. 
And we need to believe in ourselves that we can actually shape and guide the future of AI. We can be even more active if we know how to trigger changes. How is natural language processing decoding human speech? How is knowledge represented in the way data is stored and accessed? How is machine learning adapting to new environments after identifying patterns? Once we start getting answers to those questions and dig a little deeper, we finally know how to trigger changes and nudge actually AI into a better direction. In March 2016, Microsoft introduced an AI bot called Tay into the Twitter sphere. The purpose of Tay was to learning and growing by interacting with other Twitter users and showcase the potential of AI. Things got awry very quickly. It didn't even take 24 hours until Tay started tweeting out racist, misogynistic, and far-right remarks. Things got so bad, Microsoft had to take Tay down, saying, quote, Tay needed adjustments. We've never heard of Tay again, by the way. The one thing that I think was missing in this disaster of an experiment was the lack of human judgment. Human judgment means to be able to identify relationships, to conclude from evidence, and to be able to critically evaluate people, things, and events. In other words, we use our conscience to judge what is right and wrong, what is good and bad, and what is ethical and what is unethical. Having this moral compass is great, but the values are changing over time as well. And that's a good thing, because otherwise we still condone slavery, colonialism, or torture. We learn a little from history to not repeat the same mistakes and build on the good things we already did and improve them. And here's the fundamental difference to AI. While AI will be able to mimic these values and to mimic also human judgment, it will not be able to change its values over time, not without human intervention. And if we don't apply our conscience for the good, then bad things will happen. We are already aware of racial bias and gender discrimination in today's AI applications, and the Cambridge Analytica incidents showed us that whole elections can be manipulated by data and AI, but even worse things are just on the horizon like autonomous weapons, or a total state of surveillance. We need human judgment, especially when it comes to tasks that require critical thinking. For example, if we're going to ask AI to diagnose illnesses in the future, we still need doctors and medical experts to assess if those results were right or wrong, especially when it's a matter of life and death. Let's invest into subject matter expertise to apply our conscience and our judgment in the best way possible. Our heads and our hearts are important, but so are our voices. If you see anything wrong with today's AI applications at the outcomes of them, do let the people behind the applications know, and let them know also why. It's not only an opportunity, it is our duty. In conclusion, AI is not the villain here. AI is merely the tool that's going to be used by heroes and villains for the good and the bad. And it's less about human beings versus AI, it's more about human beings with AI for the good versus human beings with AI for the bad. And if we take AI out of that equation, wasn't good versus bad always the case? The future of AI can be bright, and it might look a little like this. Can you guess what I prompted to AI to generate this picture? Small hint, it has something to do with what I just talked about. Let's be disruptively creative, let's be actively optimistic, and let's judge with our conscience to shape the future of AI into the future that we want and need. I know I will, and for the sake of humanity, I hope you will too. Thank you. Thank you.